Hello everyone, welcome to Wrath of Math, I'm your host Sean Ian, in today's video we are going over how to find the derivative of a function using the chain rule. The chain rule is a rule that you're going to need to use quite often to find the derivative of what I'll call composite functions. So let's say we have a function f of x equals x to the power of let's say uh, 74. So taking the derivative of this function would be pretty easy. You just bring the 74 down here, multiply by the x, and drop the exponent by 1. So you'd have 74x to the power of 73. Pretty simple. And let's say we had another function, g of x. And let's say that was equal to uh, x cubed plus 4x plus 7. And we could take the derivative of that polynomial easily as well. But let's say we had a composite function. So let's say instead of just an x here, we actually had this function g of x. So that would be f of g of x. Then we would have x cubed plus 4x plus 7 all to the power of 74. And this is when we need the chain rule. So notice here we have the inside function g of x and then the outside function, which is f of x, which is just something to the power of 74. So the formula for the chain rule, if we want to find the derivative, start over here so I have enough room, find the derivative of f of g of x, this is equal to the derivative of the outside function, so it's f prime of g of x, taking the derivative of the outside function and leaving the inside function the same, and then multiplying that by the derivative of the inside function. So that's g prime of x. So now let's use this formula to find the derivative of our f of g of x. So first things first, well, I'll just write it out. So we are finding the derivative of f of g of x. This is equal to the derivative of the outside function, f prime, leaving the inside function the same, f prime of g of x. So we're just going to treat this as one big variable raised to the 74th power. So we bring 74 down in front, leave this whole bit the same, so that's x cubed plus 4x plus 7. And then just like you would if this was just a normal variable, you drop the exponent by 1 and that gives us 73. And now we're going to multiply this by g prime of x. So that's the derivative of this inside function. And if you're familiar with deriving polynomials, it's pretty easy. We'll just bring this 3 down in front to give us a 3x. Drop the exponent by 1. That's 3x squared. Plus this x has an exponent of 1. We're going to drop it by 1. That's going to make it x to the 0, which is just 1. Multiply that by 4 is 4 the 7 becomes a 0. And remember, we're only taking the derivative of the inside function. So this is not raised to any power because we're not looking at the outside function. And this is your derivative. Of course, you can simplify it a bit. If you wanted to, you could multiply the 74 um, through this bit here in the parentheses. And you could call that your final answer. But this is the derivative of f of g of x. And let's do one more example, and then hopefully that will be enough to give you a good solid understanding of the chain rule. All right, I'm going to switch up the colors for once. We're going to use a beautiful light blue for this example. So let's say we want to take the derivative of cosine of x. Well, that's easy. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. I'll just put a semicolon here since I haven't named this function. Uh, so it's just negative sine of x. Pretty easy. But let's say we've got something more complicated. Let's say f of x equals cosine of, how about 4x? I think I used a 4x earlier, but oh well. Now, in this situation, we're going to need the chain rule because we've got, uh, you know, a bit of a composite function. We've got our x, our outside function, cosine, and then our inside function, 4x, instead of just a normal x. Now if we use the chain rule here, again, we need to take the derivative of the outside function, ignoring, uh, well, keeping the inside function the same. That's the key. So I'll write this out. 
uh, the derivative of f of x equals, first you take the derivative of the outside function, which we already said is negative sine, negative sine of the stuff inside. Again, we leave that untouched, that's just 4x. And then you multiply this whole thing by the derivative of the inside function. Again, the exponent here is one. You bring the one down, that's four times one. This exponent goes to zero, which means this is also a one. Four times one times one, it's four. And then, just to rewrite that in more attractive terms, f of x, the derivative, f prime of x, excuse me, the derivative of cosine of 4x is equal to negative 4 sine of 4x. And that's how you use the chain rule. And of course, we still do have, you know, in this case, we've got a cosine and we've got an x. And you see, if you use the chain rule here, I'll do it real quick just so you can see that, you know, it does work even when you're in a situation where you would not need it. Um, we take the derivative of the outside function, that's negative sine. The inside function stays the same, so it's just x. And then you multiply that by the derivative of this function, uh, which is just one, because you've got a one here. The one comes down in front, that's one x, and the one goes down to zero, which makes this one, which is just one times one, so it's one. So this whole thing is getting multiplied by one, which of course means that it is itself negative sine of x. So I hope this video helped give you a basic understanding of the chain rule. Let me know if you have any video requests or any uh, confusion in the comments, or if you'd like to see some more complicated examples of the chain rule. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. All the way up here, dear Won't you please come to me? You love it up here, dear There's a light where I float That erases all black It makes everything